pinagpalang oras sa inyo mga mahal na kapatid sa Panginoon. Whether we like it or not, our life represents our prayer life. How we live our life is directly connected with our prayer life. That is why we don't have to underestimate the power of prayer. Our failure to understand the right kind of prayer is our failure to live a righteous and holy life. Kaya napakalaga na ating natututunan ang uh, mga mensahe na nanakapaloob doon sa pinakamagandang kalimbawa ng panalangin na ibinigay sa atin ng ating Panginoong Jesus. And few weeks ago, we talk about the first few lines in that best example of prayer, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And now, we're gonna continue on our series. So, samahan niyo ako, mga mahal na kapatid sa Panginoon. Let's continue. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now, it says here, give us today our daily bread. Napakalaga para maunawaan natin ang panalangin na ito is ating himay-himayin ang ibig sabihin. Uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ told His disciples about His prayer, ang sabi niya, give us today. And the word today is taken from the Greek word seremon na ang ibig sabihin nun ngayon at this very moment, now, yung ngayon. Because sa ating buhay, sa ating talambuhay, ang pinakamahalagang parte as he, ay hindi yung nakaraan ko dito. So our Lord Jesus Christ is teaching us that when we pray, it talks about now. It talks about now. What do you need at the present moment? So give us today, give us now, give us at this present moment our daily bread. And the word daily is taken from the Greek word epiisius na ang ibig sabihin po nun, hindi lang yung mga bagay na pangangailangan mo today but it includes the things that you need for tomorrow and even for the coming days. So, aralin po natin patuloy ang uh, mga mga nakapaloob na mensahe dito sa panalangin na ito. Let's continue. And what does it mean by praying for our daily bread? Ang ibig sabihin ba noon, ipapanalangin natin ang ating mga makakain pagkain sa araw-araw, la tulad ng mga gusto nating kainin every day. Yun bang ibig sabihin noon? Or like for example, papanalangin ba natin, Lord, pagkaluban po po kami ng napakaraming pagkain, ng napakaraming ulam, ng napakaraming ito yung mga pagkain na gusto namin. Yun bang ibig ng Panginoong sabihin sa pagbibigyan niya ng example ng prayer? Or it's deeper and even farther than that. Sinabi ng Panginoong Jesus that He is the brand of life. If Jesus is the bread of life, ibig sabihin lang noon, may mas malalim na ibig sabihin yung pananalangin that give us this day our daily bread. Now what does it mean by praying for our daily bread? Ibig sabihin noon, we're praying for God's word to sustain us. When Jesus Christ was tempted by the enemy, by by the by the devil, ang sabi niya, man does not live by bread alone. Ang tunay na buhay ay nasa salita ng Diyos. Wala doon sa physical food na ating kinakain lang. Of course, we need that. But the, the real essence of this prayer is when we pray for our daily bread, we're praying for His Word to sustain us daily. Yun ang ibig sabihin noon, mahal na kapatid. Ang sabi ng Panginoong Yesus, I am the living bread. Siya ang tinapay ng buhay. Ano pang ibig sabihin when we pray this kind of prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. It means we're praying for His kingdom to govern us. Sabi ng Panginoong Yesus, Do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Ano ba yung, kung, kung ano ba yung makakain natin? Huwag tayong mag-worry sa mga bagay na yun. Or ano yung ating iinumin? Huwag tayong mag-worry doon. Bakit, mga mahal na kapatid? Kasi yun yung mga bagay na pinapanalangin o dinidesire ng mga pagano. Okay, in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 32, ang sabi ng Panginoong Jesus, For the pagans ran after all these things. In other translations, they're using the word, for the pagans are seeking. Okay, when you run after all these things, you're seeking. And it, it, it seems like you're praying for those things to come to you. 
Pero hindi tayo ganun, mahal na kapatid. When we pray for our daily bread, we're not praying for those uh, food that spoils. We're praying that His kingdom would govern us. Kaya nga itong sinabi ng Panginoon at uh, most of us bilang mga mananampalataya ay memorize or familiar with this verse. In verse 33, ang sabi ng Panginoon, lito, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And all those things shall be given to you as well. So when you're praying for your for your daily bread, when we're praying for our daily bread, ang ibig sabihin nun, we're praying for His kingdom to govern us. To govern us not only for today, but to govern us on a daily basis. So napakahalaga mahal na kapatid na malinaw na malinaw sa atin ang gustong iparating ng Panginoon. What else? Ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Give us today our daily bread. It means we're praying for His will to be done. When we pray for His for our daily bread, pinapanalangin natin na mapangyari yung kalooban ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay. The disciples asked Jesus right after meeting with the Samar- Samaritan woman. Pagkatapos mamit ng, uh, I know we're familiar with this story, na kung saan mamit ng Panginoong Jesus, itong Samaritan woman. And right after that, ang sabi ng mga disipulo in the book of John chapter 4, verse 31 to uh, thir- uh, 34, sabi dito, Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. Pinapakain nila ang ating Panginoong Jesus. Siyempre, makikita natin, napagod, kumuha ng tubig doon sa well, natin, uh, tumulong itong Samaritan woman. But he said to them, Our Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Sabi niya, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Now, in verse 33, ito pong sabi, mga mahal na kapatid, Then his disciples said to each other, Nung sinabi ng Panginoong Yesus sa kanila, Meron akong pagkain na kakainin na hindi nyo alam. Ang sabi ng Panginoong Yesus. Nung nag-usap-usap ito mga, mga disipulo niya, ang sabi nila, may, may nagbigay kaya sa kanya ng pagkain? Ngayon, sumagot ang Panginoong Yesus. And this tells us about the meaning of the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples. Sabi niya, My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. Yung palang ibig sabihin nun. So our Lord Jesus Christ is telling His disciples, telling us, when we're praying for our daily bread, ang ibig sabihin nun, we're praying for God's will, for His will to be done in our daily life. So napakalaga mga mahal na kapatid na huunawaan natin yun. Pag hindi natin naunawaan yun, mga mahal na kapatid, ang magiging panalangin natin is will be all about the physical and the material things that we need. Ang pananalangin natin ay pagdulog sa Panginoon upang ang kanyang ganap na kalooban ay mapangyari sa ating mga buhay. Amen po ba, mga mahal na kapatid? Of course, wala namang problema sa mali, sa mananalangin tayo sa ating mga uh, material na pangailangan but you know the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ was telling us as his disciples ay hindi talaga primarily on the material things the physical things that we really need our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us to pray that his will to be done in our lives kung tayo mga manggagawa in the kingdom of God kung nakakita tayo ng mga sundalo na nasa gera hindi sila a, a, ang, ang kanilang nire-request, ang kanilang mga hinihinging uh, was this uh, uh, information sa kanilang mga commander-in-chief, sa kanilang mga superior, ay hindi pagkain. Ang kanilang hinihingi ay yung mga instruction, paano tayo susugod, paano tayo magwawagi sa battle na ito. In the same way, ganun din sa ating mga pananalangin. Even if we don't pray for the food, for the, for the physical food, the government of the kingdom is there to provide for all our needs. So, mahal na kapatid, ang mga sundalo, ang government ang nagpo-provide ng kanilang pangangailangan habang sila'y nakikipagbakbakan sa mga kaaway. The same is true with us bilang mga mananampalataya, bilang mga kumikilala sa ating Panginoon, bilang ating tagapagligtas, bilang ating hari, bilang, bilang ating Diyos na may akda ng ating Kaligtasan. So, mahal na kapatid, this is really powerful. Clearly, the bread that Jesus was mentioning in this prayer wasn't really about the physical food. 
or the food that spoils. Jesus talked about the daily bread as the will of God in our lives. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 to 17, nakikita natin dito, sabi dito, na uh, our, our daily bread speaks about God's will to be done. In the same way that the full armor of God, yung full armor of God, makikita natin ang sinasabi dito sa Apostle Pablo, sa mga kapatid sa Epeso, he talk about the, the full armor of God, the the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and then yung helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, but they all refer to the Word of God. In the same way, in this prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Sabi, your kingdom come, your will be done. They talk about the will of God. Kung makikita natin, ganun, magbigay ng mensahe ang Panginoon. It's just like the Lord is using different terms and words, but it all goes down. It all, uh, it all talks about the Word of God. It talks about the will of God in our life. And right after this, ang sanabi ng Panginoon sa, sa, sa sumunod na, na mga linya, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. <laughs> Look at this. <clears throat> and uh, mahalaga na ating uh, talakayin. Ano ba yung kahalagahan ng pagpapatawad? And the next line talks about the importance of forgiveness. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga kasalanan tulad ng aming pagpapatawad sa mga nagkasala sa amin. Kahit gaano tayo kadalas manalangin, kahit gaano tayo kadalas mag-prayer and fasting, kahit pa tayo ay uh, napakahabang manalangin everyday, if we don't know how to forgive, useless lang ang ating mga pananalangin. And we got to understand the importance of forgiveness and the benefits of forgiveness. Now, if you have your ball pen with you, please write this down and please share this to your friends. The benefits of forgiveness. Maybe uh, you have no idea, mahal na kapatid, but uh, karamihan sa mga sakit, karamihan sa mga illnesses, they are forgiveness and or bitterness or hatred related. According to studies, bitter people tend to be so stressful in life. And uh, studies have found that the act of forgiveness can bring huge benefits sa ating mga physical bodies. Pag tayo marunong magpatawad, pag ating tinatanggal ang ating mga sama ng loob, tayo ay nagkakaranas ng kagalingan sa ating mga physical body. And according to one doctor, uh, director of the mood dis disorders, adult consultation clinic at the John Hopkins Hospital, ang sabi niya, there is an enormous physical burden to being hurt and disappointed. So, na nabanggit dito sa, sa study nila na kapag ang isang tao daw ay mapagpatawad, mas nagkakaroon ng improvement sa kanyang physical body. nag improve yung cholesterol level, nag improve yung pagtulog, nagiging mahimbing, nawawala yung pananakit ng mga kung ano-ano kasukasuan, yung blood pressure na nagiging maayos, yung levels of anxiety mas bumababa, yung depression, yung stress, kundi man bumababa, nawawala dahil sa pagpapatawad. And makikita natin dito, ang Panginoong Jesus Kapag siya nagpapagaling during his earthly ministry, instead na sabihin, uh, magaling ka na, po pwede namang sabihin ng Panginoon na magaling ka na, but instead of using those words, you know, you're healed, instead, ang ginagamit ng Panginoon is yung, yung salitang, you're forgiven. Okay? So, unang-una, healing. Healing. O kagalingan. Okay? Matthew 9 tells us that healing comes from forgiveness. Jesus healed the paralytic man. And all he needed to say was, your sins are forgiven. Kasi nga, ang pagpapatawad ay nagdudulot ng kagalingan. Nagdudulot ng kagalingan sa ating mga physical body. Uh, in the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 12, makikita natin dito, uh, some, men brought to, some men brought to him a paralyzed man. Okay. In the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 2, and lying on a mat, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. The same is true nung ating na, na, 
na, na meet ng Panginoong Yesus itong itong uh, was this the sinful woman who brought the alabaster, alabaster jar na merong perfume ang ginawa niya pumunta siya dito sa sa paanan ng ating Panginoong Yesus at pinunasan niya ng kanyang buhok at, at tapos nilagyan niya ng, ng pabango and Jesus told her you're forgiven So that indicates the healing of the person because forgiveness brings healing. And the word healing, mahal na kapatid, is connected to the word salvation. And the word salvation is taken from the Greek word soteria ng ibig sabihin nun, um, deliverance. So when there is forgiveness, there can be deliverance. When there's forgiveness, there is this healing. When there's forgiveness, there is this protection. When there's forgiveness, there is there is this redemption. When there's forgiveness, there is regeneration and there is this restoration. So mahal na kapatid, ang pagpapatawad ay napakahalaga sa buhay. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Ano pa yung benefits ng pagpapatawad, mahal na kapatid? Reconciliation. Forgiveness brings reconciliation. Forgiveness restores relationship. Kung gusto mong maayos ang iyong relasyon, hin- ang, ang pananalangin, mahal na kapatid, is nakikita sa ating lifestyle. Okay? Ang pananalangin natin is kakibat doon ang pagpapatawad sa ating kapwa. Pagpa- ang pagpapatawad ay nagre-restore sa anumang relasyon. So if you want your relationship to be restored, hindi ko alam kung meron kang mga kailangang ayusin relasyon sa buhay mo, mahal na kapatid. But I do believe mayroon. Kung yan naman ay kasama mo sa trabaho, okay, you can restore that relationship because that's the will of God. And that's possible when you forgive. 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 Okay? More relationships can be restored by forgiveness than any form of heated explanations and arguments. Kahit gaano aganda explanation mo, argumento, hanggat hindi ka nagpapatawad, hindi magkakaroon ng kaayusan o reconciliation sa anumang relasyon. Restoration in all kinds of relationship can be possible only through forgiveness. We can never see any restored relationship without forgiveness. Okay. Kaya nga sabi ng Panginoong Yesus, even sa pag-aalay, no? pag, pag-offer natin ng ating mga... Uh, the best, even the best offerings sa Panginoon, mag-aali ka sa, sa templo, sa altar, ang sabi ng Panginoon, leave your gift there in front of the altar kung kayo'y mag-aalay. Leave it. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Kapag ikaw ay may mga, uh, alam ka na merong, um, merong kang kaalitan o merong, merong galit sa'yo, ang gagawin mo is ikaw ang lalapit sa kanya. Kailangan maranasan niya, kailangan maintindihan niya that you're, you're there, willing to forgive him, willing to forgive her. At doon marirestore yung relationship. Yun ang nais ng Panginoon. Okay? So forgiveness uh, rebuilds shattered relationships. Kahit gaano kasira yung relasyon, kapag may pagpapatawad, maayos at maayos yan. Forgiveness mends the broken heart. Kahit nasira na yung yung may may katagano sinaktan mo ang puso ko kahit nasaktan ka na hmm, kapag handa ka magpatawad hmm, marerestore possible na marestore pa rin yung relationship that's why Jesus Christ tells his disciples that forgiveness is the key towards reconciliation let me read it to you mahal na kapatid in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 to 24 therefore if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember pag nag-o-offer daw tayo maaalala natin yung ating mga kapatid o sino man sa ating kapatid ay uh, they, they have something against us sabi leave your gift there in front of the altar first napakalaga first go and be reconciled to them paano tayo mare-reconcile sa mga tao na yon kapag hindi natin willing silang patawarin forgiveness is the prerequisite of reconciliation let me repeat it mahal na kapatid Forgiveness is the prerequisite of reconciliation. That is why Apostle Paul and the rest of the disciples were preaching 
uh, these powerful truths, both to the Israelites and even to the Gentiles. Pinapangaral ni Apostol Pablo yung, yung kahalagahan ng pagpapatawad in the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 38 to 39, sabi ni Apostol Pablo sa, sa kanyang pangaral dito sa Pisidian Antioch, sabi niya, Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. <laughs> Ang forgiveness kasi, yan ang susi upang magkaroon ng reconciliation sa relasyon. Through Him, sabi ni Apostle Pablo, who believe, through Him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. A justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19, let me read it to you, mahal na kapatid. All this is from God. Who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us this ministry of reconciliation. Mahal na kapatid, yung pagpapatawad ng Panginoong Diyos ay nag-aayos sa ating relasyon sa Kanya. Ganon din sa atin, sa ating kapwa. Sa iyong kapatid, sa iyong kapamilya, sa iyong kaibigan, sa iyong kasamahan sa trabaho, sa iyong mga magulang, sa kahit kaninong tao, maging sa mga tao sa gobyerno. Okay? Forgiveness. Forgiveness is the key for us to be reconciled. What else? Ano pa yung benefits ng forgiveness? Andyan yung answered prayers. Marahil you've been praying for something, hindi pa rin tinutugo ng Panginoon. Bakit kaya? Siguro dahil walang pagpapatawad sa iyong puso. Marahil ganun. I remember when 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 the people of Israel were, were attacking the land of uh, the city of Ai, nagbigay ng mensahe itong si, si, si Joshua because... Uh, that's their desire na makonquer nila tong tong lugar ng itong city of Ai but even if they 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 came to the lord and asked the lord to to be with them hindi sila nag hindi sila nagwagi bakit kasi nga wala pang pagpapatawad okay napakalaga ng pagpapatawad kaya nga nung kanilang sinama ngayon itong uh, itong buong buong family ni Achan na siyang nagtago ng mga kayamanang nasamsam nila sa previous uh, battle nila, sinama doon lahat ng kanyang mga kapamilya, lahat ng kanyang ari-arian, lahat ng kanyang mga mga alaga, mga hayop, pinagpapatay-patay sila. And, and, and that talks about the 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 the, 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 the wage of sin is death. Yan nagkaroon ng forgiveness. At nung nagkaroon ng forgiveness, doon sila nagwagi. In the book of Joshua chapter 7, and, and if you want to study this, uh, study this at home. In the book of Joshua chapter 7, makikita natin kung paano hindi tinugon ng Diyos ang nais nila na magwagi. Okay. So, ganun din sa ating buhal. You've been praying perhaps for something to happen. You've been praying for a breakthrough. You've been praying for something in your life. But parang hindi tinutugon. Perhaps because of this unforgiving spirit. So, mahal na kapatid, when we pray the disciples' prayer, the essence of that is forgiveness. If you want to experience the the uh, the answered prayers in your life, you have to be willing to forgive. Tayo pinatawad ng Panginoon, kaya tayo ay magpatawad din. Sabi dito in the book of James chapter 4 verse 3, When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. Ang motive natin bilang Kristiyano, sundin ng Panginoon, mapangyari ang kanyang kalooban at nais ng Panginoon na tayo ay magpatawad sa ating kapwa. And uh, it's selfish not to forgive other people. How dare us not to forgive others if we declare we have already been forgiven by the God that we worship. Ano pa yung benepisyo? Ang pagpapatawad ay nagbibigay sa atin ng rewards. Forgiveness brings rewards. The Bible tells us that receiving God's forgiveness allows us to, to forgive and bless those people, even, even do good things to the evil people na gumagawa sa atin ng mga di maganda. Sabi dito in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 46, If you love those who love you, meaning, if you forgive those who, who, who forgive you, anong, anong reward ang matatamo natin? Because laging kaakibat sa ating pagmamahal ang pagpapatawad. Ang tunay na nagmamahal ay nagpapatawad. Let me repeat it, mahal na kapatid. Because forgiveness brings rewards. If you don't know how to forgive, 
you don't know how to love. Again, if you don't know how to forgive, you don't know how to love. Let me repeat it again. If you don't know how to forgive, you don't know how to love. Are not even the tax collectors doing that? Ang sabi ng Panginoong Yesus. Hindi ba maging ang mga makasalanan tao? Mabuti sila sa mga mabuti sa kanila? So tayo bilang mga mananampalataya, if you want the rewards from heaven, from God, from the kingdom, we got to forgive people. Patawarin mo na sila. For your healing, for your own good, for your benefit, and for the benefit of the people around you. That they may know that we are the disciples of Jesus Christ. So forgiveness brings rewards. It's insane to pray the Lord's Prayer without having a heart to forgive. Now, probably gusto natin magpatawad. But the question is, alam na natin yung mga benepisyo no, ng pagpapatawad. But, ang susunod na tanong natin, how to forgive? Ang katotohanan sa buhay, maraming tao hindi marunong magpatawad. Let me repeat it, mahal na kapatid. Ang katotohanan sa mundo na ating ginagalawan, maraming tao ang hindi marunong magpatawad. Yes, even those people who are in the church or who go to the church. Not all church goers know how to forgive. But the real members of the church Definitely, they know how to forgive. And that's the reason why I'm sharing this truth sa inyo, mga mahal na kapatid. How to forgive. Sabi ng Panginoon sa the best example of prayer, otherwise known as the disciples' prayer or the Lord's prayer, sabi dito, Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Papaano ba yung tamang klase ng pagpapatawad? Unang-una, mahal na kapatid, forgiveness, real forgiveness, is done unconditionally. Ang ibig sabihin noon, walang kondisyon. Magpatawad ka ng walang kondisyon. Yun ang klase ng, tunay na klase ng pagpapatawad. Kung gusto mong makaranas ng iba yung pagpapala, iba yung uh, breakthrough sa iyong buhay, magpatawad ka. Patawarin mo yung tao na yon unconditionally. Walang kondisyon. Bakit? Kasi ganun yung klase ng pagpapatawad na tinanggap natin mula sa Panginoon. Ang sabi in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, Be kind to one another. This is the message of Apostle Paul to the believers in Ephesus. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. So ang klase ng pagpapatawad daw natin sa ating kapwa ay tulad ng pagpapatawad sa atin ng Diyos. Pinatawad tayo ng Diyos unconditionally, without any condition. Ganon din ang gawin natin. Pangalawa, Ang tamang klase ng pagpapatawad ay pagpapatawad unilaterally. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Just like unconditionally. Unilaterally. Na hindi mo na hinihintay pa na humingi ng tawad sa iyo yung tao bago mo siya patawarin. Uh, kailan lamang may napanood akong uh, news ano, sa Philippines. Merong isang politiko ang ini-interview at sabi, o oh, pinatawad mo na ba siya? Pinatawad mo na ba yung ganito? Ganyan. Ah, sabi niya, bakit ko siya patatawarin? Eh, hindi pa naman siya humingi ng tawad sa akin. Sometimes, ganun mag-isip tayo no, bilang tao. Para mapatawad natin ng isang tao, kailangan humingi muna siya ng sorry o paumanhin sa atin. Ngunit sa atin bilang mga mananampalataya, dapat natin maintindihan, ang tamang klase ng pagpapatawad ay unilateral. Let me repeat it once again. Ang tamang klase ng pagpapatawad ay unilateral. Hindi mo na hinihintay yung tao na mo humingi sa iyo ng sorry o paumanhin o ng dispensa bago mo siya patawarin. You can forgive people unilaterally. Just like what our Lord Jesus Christ did. Hmm. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. Sa paanong paraan? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, He forgave us. That's the meaning of Christ Jesus dying on the cross. The meaning is forgiveness. Ang totoong pagpapatawad, unilateral, mahal kapatid. Kahit pa hindi siya humingi sa'yo ng tawad, patawarin mo na siya. Kaibigan mo man yan, kapatid mo man yan, kasama mo sa trabaho, politiko man yan, church leader man yan, sino man kakilala mo dati na maayos kayo na ngayon, hindi na, o may nanira sa'yo, you can forgive that person. Because forgiveness can be done unilaterally. How to forgive? Forgive unilaterally. What else, mahal na kapatid? 
forgive evidently. Ang pagpapatawad may evidence. Hindi po pwedeng sabihin natin si isang tao, pinatawad na kita, pero ayoko makita pag umukha mo. Hindi po pwede yon. Hindi po pwede natin sabihin, pinatawad na kita, pero uh, wag ka na wag na wag ka na magpapakita sa akin. Hindi tunay na pagpapatawad yon mahal na kapatid. And perhaps you've heard those remarks from people, ano? Sabihin nila, pinatawad ko na siya, basta ayoko na makita pag umukha niya. Pinatawad ko na siya, pero wag na wag na magkukrus ang aming landas. Pinatawad ko na siya, pero wag na wag siyang tatawag sa akin, wag na wag siyang magme-message sa akin. Pinatawad ko na siya, pero ayaw na, ayaw ko na siya makita. Hindi ganun yung tunay na pagpapatawad, mahal na kapatid. Sabi in the book of First John chapter 3, verse 18, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Tulad ng damanggit ko kanina, We cannot love without forgiveness. If you know how to forgive, it means you know how to love. If you want to forgive, you have to do it evidently. May evidence, may nakikitang pruweba na ikay nagpapatawad. Kaya nga sinulat ng, uh, uh, ng mga disipulo ng Panginoon. In the Gospels, nakila, nakalagay dito kung, pa, kung paano nagbigay ng instruction ng Panginoon sa pagpapatawad sa ating kapwa, sa pagmamahal sa ating kapwa. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 35, makikita natin doon yung malinaw na mensahe ng Panginoon kung paano ba tayo magpapatawad. At mahaliwanag na sinasabi dyan. Sabi dito, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. So, tatlong bagay makikita natin na maliwanag dito as evidence of forgiving people. Una, loving them. It's impossible for you to love without knowing how to forgive. Forgiveness means loving people. Loving means forgiving people. Love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. Yung mga naninira sa iyo, panalangin mo sila. Yan. One time I remember may nagtanong sa akin, Pastor, pa, paano ko malalaman ko talagang ako yung nagmamahalan ng ating, aking kaaway? Kapag naipapanalangin mo na siya, that's a good indication na ikaw ay nagpatawad at tunay na nagmamahal na. What else? When you do good to those people, hindi lang na mga, sa mga tao na gumagawa sa'yo ng mabuti, maging sa mga tao na nakagawa sa'yo ng di maganda, you continue doing good to them. Yun ang tunay na pagpapatawad, mahal na kapatid. And I hope, Marami kang natutunan sa ating mga tinalaki ngayon. And it's my prayer, mahal na kapatid, that God would use you mightily for the glory of His name. And uh, wherever you are right now, I declare blessings and favors to be upon you. And may the Lord keep you safe. May the Lord use your life to advance His kingdom. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.